Hi, welcome to Only Believe Podcast. I'm Victoria Werner. Today's message may be a little uncomfortable for some. Maybe you've never heard the Word of God concerning homosexual or lesbian lifestyle. I was watching a a television program not long ago, and as I was watching and listening, and they were talking about how excited they were that now they could be just out front and uh, be able to share with people that they were gay, their family, their friends, and so forth, and and knowing now that the government sanctions same-sex marriage, it is written into the law of the land, and as I was listening, the commercial break came, and I was pondering everything that was said and it was that time when the Lord came to me and said I want you to give them my word I want you to teach them what I have said concerning a homosexual lifestyle and the Lord said what the government has sanctioned I want you to tell them that I never will sanction nor approve a homosexual and lesbian lifestyle. So that what brings me to today's message. Not to bash you, not to come against you in such a way that you maybe have been used to other people. I want to obey God and share with you just exactly what God says about a homosexual and lesbian lifestyle. So what does God say? What does his word say about a man who lies with a man? Or a woman who lies with a woman? What does God say about that? In Leviticus 18.22, In Leviticus 20, verse 13, God commands. He said, do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is detestable, he said. In Leviticus 18, 22, in the Living Bible, it says homosexuality is absolutely forbidden. For it is an enormous sin. That's what God says. God said, He created us in his image, male and female, created he them. Be fruitful and multiply. It's God's order for male and female to marry, to procreate, to have children. That's the order of God. All right, you may be saying, wait a minute, the government sanctions what we're doing. I can go down and file for a marriage license. I can marry the man I want to marry. or I can marry a woman. That's what the law right now in our America. In Acts 5.29, But Peter and the apostles answered and said, We must obey God rather than men. Men legislate and create bills in America. But it's not God's laws. God is the one who created us. Man man did not create us. God did. And it's God who created us in his image and likeness in the very beginning. The simple answer is that Christians are to obey human law except where that human law violates God's law. Our supreme duty is to obey God. That's our duty. And since God tells us to also obey human laws, we should. But when they come in conflict to God's word, 
we are to obey God rather than men. When we call ourselves Christians, God said in his word, if you love me, keep my commandments. Simple. Now, you may ask, what would happen to me if I don't believe, if I don't believe the word of God, what would happen to me? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9 to 11. It says, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Here God is making a distinction of those who will enter into the kingdom of God and those who will not. And he's saying to those who who did accept Christ, they were washed, they were sanctified, they were justified through Jesus Christ. So that one who makes that choice, when you make the choice to follow Jesus Christ, then the Lord not only forgives you, but cleanses you from that unrighteousness, from sin. And so, the Lord makes it very clear on those who will enter in to the kingdom of God. You may ask, is heaven real? Is hell real? It's all in the Bible. Heaven is real and so is hell. In Revelation 21, it says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now he speaks to those who did not receive him. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, there's that word again. And murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I'm here to tell you God didn't create you for hell. He created you for heaven. But you have to make the choice. You choose. We have to be open-minded and open-hearted to the scriptures, to, to God. Do you know no one in scripture spoke of hell more than Jesus did? And no one spoke of it in more terrible terms. Hell. Jesus calls it eternal punishment. It's Matthew 25, 46. Eternal fire. Matthew 18, 8. He describes hell as unquenchable fire, Matthew 3.12, and also a place of torment, Luke 16.28. Outer darkness, this is all describing this lake of fire. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, Matthew 13.42. Being in anguish, Luke 16.24 where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. You're talking about a raging, raging fire 
that is consuming your bodies, your spirits, continually, 24-7. Mark 9, 48. And he teaches that people do not go there voluntarily. They are cast into hell by God. Luke 12, 5 and Matthew 5, 29. You say, wow, that, that's a mean God. No, that's a just God. The Bible says you're thrown into the outer darkness. Matthew 8, 12. God is the judge who makes these reckonings. Hell is a sentence on evil. Not merely a sequel to evil, it is judgment. How are you to escape from the judgment of hell? Matthew 23, 33. Therefore, God is to be feared. Fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Hell is a real place. But again, you choose your path. You can choose eternal life. You can choose that path through Jesus Christ. Now, the Lord loves you and he says, I don't want anyone, no one to perish. That's you. Let's go back before you were born and see what God says about you. In Psalms 139, 13. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. The Father knew you and before you were born. The Bible says before the foundation of the world, God chose you in Him. In Him. That's the will of God for your life while we are in the earth. How beautiful He created you. Special. Wonderfully. Beautifully. That's you. So God created man in his own image. The image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. You were created, if you're a female, that was and is and will always remain the will of God for you to be a female. If you were created, same as a male, if you were created a male, God's desire is that you will remain a male all the days of your life. This transgenderism, that is from Satan. Satan wants to come and tempt you to go in an opposite direction of the will of the Father God, according to Scripture. John 10.10 says the thief comes to steal. He wants to steal your identity. But to kill and destroy, he wants to kill your image. And that you be something and someone that you're not. And Jesus said, but I am come. I am come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. Just maybe as you were growing, two years, three years old, four to five to seven to eight to nine ten maybe during those years maybe something happened maybe your atmosphere wasn't full of love and nurturing and affirmation and as a little child we're to be nurtured in love from our parents taught in love from our parents and others and affirmed in love by our parents but maybe that didn't happen for you 
just maybe someone your father your mother someone brought pain to you maybe they argued at you and demeaned you and put you down maybe you heard yelling and fussing and cussing maybe you had a dad who was an alcoholic or maybe you were abused and beaten by those who were supposed to love you or maybe maybe one of the worst tragedies of your life as a child that you were molested by someone you trusted or someone you didn't know they came and violated you perhaps that's what happened to you and the pain is so horrific that you can't face this pain And because of all that pain and all that heartache that you had to face and endure day after day after day, it broke your little heart, little girl. Or it made you fight mad on the inside of your heart. That you couldn't wait to get away and to get out and to look for something better, someone, something. When there's pain and there's sadness and rejection in your heart, now maybe someone came along when you were in that type of vulnerability, and they just showed you that they cared about you, that they're willing to treat you special by spending time with you or spend their money on you, and inside you feel real good because they care, and and now you feel obligated. But that same person. that made you feel real good began to come and began to take advantage of you and because of the pain because of the sadness you opened your heart to that the lord said you shall not lie with a male as one lies with a female it's an abomination if a man lies with a male as with a woman both of them have committed an abomination and they shall surely be put to death their blood is upon them that's god's word that's not my word that's god's word that's what his word says in his bible and he wrote the word for us so that we would know so that we could have a future like god intended And you know sometimes people they get trapped by other people especially when you're little maybe someone your uncle your dad your aunt your sister or brother your neighbor they molest you they molest you not once or maybe over and over again and now your mind is confused and maybe your mind says well maybe this is the way I'm supposed to be maybe God is allowing this to happen No. You are not made for that kind of lifestyle. You were made in the image of God. God created man in his own image and the image of God he created him male and female. He created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, "Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it." You were made male or female special. Wonderful. and beautiful when you live a homosexual lifestyle or a lesbian lifestyle you're discrediting the very god who created you you're demeaning him and you're demeaning yourself and you're dishonoring god because god created you and he created you for his purpose and in this discrediting and dis- demeaning and dishonoring that's the root and essence of all sin why would someone just deliberately dishonor god or maybe unconsciously dishonor god 
because number one, they don't know him. They don't really know him. They've heard about him, but they don't know him. Number two, maybe you've never felt the presence of God. I lived 27 years and never felt the presence of God. Or number three, maybe life has dealt you such a blow, so many things has happened against you, maybe you're mad at God. God said in Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, it says, I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. God is so clear showing us that he alone sets before us a choice a pathway a way to choose it's up to us now he's setting out the good first he said i set before you life he said but now there's a path that's going to lead you to death he said but i'm going to give you a path of blessings or Along with this death, there's curses on your life. Now choose life. He's, he's pleading with us. Choose life so that you and your children may live. That's an awesome promise. That promise is to you. And so today, right now, you have a choice to make. You can come out from the sin and the abomination of your the lifestyle of a homosexual or lesbian and you could repent right now you can say within your heart you know God I want life and I want your blessings and I want the life that you have for me and I want my children that I'm going to live and my children are going to live you can choose that today you say how do I choose that I'm going to share in the next slide how to choose life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. For those who believe in him, Jesus, are not condemned. But those who do not believe in him, they stand condemned. So how do I get out of my lifestyle, Victoria? Tell me. The Lord said if we confess our sins, you have to own and become accountable for that sin of homosexuality. If we confess our sins, He, Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And He does more than just forgive us. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Jesus said in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, by Jesus Christ. No other way, no other man, no other religion. Only through Jesus Christ is the way that you come in. The best news ever is if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him, whoever, will you be that whoever today? Will you be that one that says, I will believe? And... Jesus promised you shall not perish, but you will have eternal life. Here in Mark 1.15, it says, Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means metaneo in the Greek, and it means to change your mind. It means to turn around. So when you change your mind, you change the direction of your life. When you change your mind, 
and you turn, you say to the Lord, I believe, I believe this good news, gospel of Jesus Christ. When you begin to believe that, then your life begins to receive life tangible life from Jesus, resurrection life from Jesus, your whole being will be changed and you will love to learn about the ways of Jesus. You'll learn, love to love Jesus because he loves you that much, even more so. We can't even comprehend truly the love of Jesus Christ. But when you turn and you believe, and you start walking out this gospel, you will know what living life is really all about. Today the Lord is knocking on the door of your heart. He says in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice. And open the door, that's your heart. Jesus promised, he said, I will come in to you, and I will sup with you, and he with me. The Lord desires you. You are needed in the kingdom of God. Yes, you are. There's so many people that don't believe in God, don't want God, don't know about God. And the presence of the Lord is looking for those who have walked a path of great pain. But as they bow their knees to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, the Lord comes in with his resurrection life, and he will come into you today. Will you pray this prayer with me, please? Lord Jesus, I come to you, and I ask you to forgive me. I ask that you will cleanse me from this sin. I've sinned against you. And I've sinned against heaven. And I humbly ask your forgiveness. And I ask Jesus that you would come into my body and fill me with your presence and take over my life. And I surrender everything to you, Lord Jesus. And as an act of my will today, I will to follow you And to follow your path, your truth, Jesus. I repent today. And I believe that today, that you died for my sins. You were buried with my sins. And on the third day, you rose again. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I'm saved. Today, I'm saved. If you prayed that prayer. I would love to hear from you. You can email me at vwerneth, my last name, W-E-R-N-E-T-H, at mail.com. And it will be on this post. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening today. I love you. And God loves you.